Hello, I'd like to share some thoughts about Nigel Farage, for whom I have very great respect for his political agenda and the courage with which he's been highlighting the Islamic threat in the current election campaign. And his speech at uh, Dover was entirely commendable. And he was entirely right to use the invasion language, which many others have also uh, used. Indeed, a sort of D-Day reversal, m more than a D-Day reversal, has been taking place for some time, and which he has rightly highlighted. But whilst he is prepared to highlight the threat from a minority of uh, Muslims, the vociferous, uh, aggressive kind, which have voiced their thoughts and convictions and desires in the demonstrations in London and after the local government elections in the North, uh, whilst these things have to be exposed, he distinguishes between such people and the generally law-abiding uh, Muslim population who are fulfilling a role within society, uh, doing well for their children, paying their taxes and so on and so forth, as if they themselves are no threat. Yes, the aggressive ones really should be arrested and deported. But there's been a long-standing distinction between moderate Muslims and militant Muslims. Now, uh, Mr. Farage is defending, um, vindicating in a sense, the, the moderate Muslims, and uh, his accusations are chiefly levelled against the militant Muslims, which are certainly on the increase. But the fact is that whilst one makes these distinctions, there's no such thing as moderate Islam. Uh, moderate Islam uh, is a fiction. Uh, true Islam, the teaching of the Quran and the Hadith, the sayings of the of the Prophet uh, Muhammad, are, are full of hate, anti-Christian hate, anti-Jewish hate, anti-Semitic uh, thoughts uh, uh, fill the Quran. And uh, it is, if you like, the source of all the problem, because the Islamic agenda for 13 centuries has been to turn the world into a universal caliphate. And it's their current campaign to turn Europe and the United Kingdom and North America and everywhere, everywhere else in the world into this universal, this global caliphate. And their inspiration comes from the Quran uh, itself. No question about that. So when you question the so-called moderate Muslims about their faith, uh, unless they wish to deny and betray their faith, uh, they uh, will have to acknowledge these things. Uh, so often the falsehood that's been expressed is, well, Islam means peace, which is one of the biggest lies uh, in the world at the present time. No, as the... Uh, recently uh, killed leader of ISIS uh, said that uh, jihad uh, is the th thought behind immigration. Immigration is a tool of jihad. That is their official thinking. And uh, if, you, if you press the agenda of, of the moderate Muslims, uh, they will dissemble. They, they use something called takia uh, to dissimulate. They're permitted to lie in order to uh, promote um, their faith and to preserve their identity. But the trouble is the moderate Muslim community, so-called, provides the seedbed from which aggressive ones can arise. So one cannot, in fact, deny that the root of the problem is not just a so-called militant interpretation of Islam, but original, hate-driven, 
Quranic teaching. That really is the problem, and that's what we have to face. So Mr. Farage, for all his commendable comments and the courage with which he's expressing them, he really needs a religious advisor. He needs a chaplain, and I'm, I'd be prepared to offer my services if that, if that would help. But of course, the way to tackle uh, Muslims uh, in this country, uh, even the moderate ones, is, is not to threaten them physically, to uh, even deport them, but to present aggressively, in the metaphorical sense, the Christian faith. The problem is, is that the whole ecumenical atmosphere of Christianity in this country, which is found in the Roman Catholic Church, the Church of England, and many of the uh, um, nonconformist churches, uh, they're, they're, they're not committed to the spread of authentic Christianity. They've been betrayed by political correctness. They've been intimidated by, by this thinking. They're, they're, they're afraid of being called racist if they criticize Islam, which, by the way, is not a race, it is a religion. And uh, this really is the problem. And uh, our Judeo-Christian values, rooted in the authentic Christian faith found in the Word of God, the Holy Bible, is that that needs to be proclaimed and to be highlighted. Now, I don't expect politicians to do this, but I expect politicians like Mr. Farage to recognize that um, they should be encouraging church leaders to proclaim authentic Christianity. For that alone is the solution, because Muslims need saving by the grace of God. Uh, Anti-Muslim secularists need saving by the grace of God. This is the only answer. It's the only hope for the United Kingdom, for Europe, and for the entire world. That is my belief. We need Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and the only Savior of the world. And this should be trumpeted forth by every Christian everywhere. So I hope that Mr. Farage will recognize seriously that uh, it's more than just militant Islam. It's more than these jihadists. It is the religion itself which is the root of the problem. Our only remedy in the current crisis is authentic Christianity. Thank you for listening. I trust that these thoughts will uh, be of some benefit to you who are listening and hearing. Thank you very much.